Could we be headed into a depression? Not just a recession, but an actual depression. I don't know. You don't know. Finney doesn't know. Pablo doesn't know. But not to think about this is absurd to me. And to be just like, ah, the Fed will fail. I, I, don't, I don't get it, man. People, people do not want. Look, man, if you read the Bible, you read about Isaiah, Jeremiah, Daniel, Ezekiel. And you read about people saying, hey, look, you know, things are going to get tight. You better be prepared. Not to take a, for some kind of symbols of caution doesn't make sense to me. That doesn't mean you throw up your hands and you throw, get out the entirety of the stock market. I don't mean all that. I'm just saying what, what could happen? Because the evidence is building a little bit that something like this may happen. So let me tell you what I'm talking about. My man Jeff sends me these nice little tidbits. And this is from M2, the M2 money supply. Money supply contraction right here. I mean, all right, it went crazy up. I get that. I mean, more than any time. Look at that. Dude, it's crazy. Percent change from year over year. So it went up by basically 28%, roughly, 27.5% from the year over year. Huge increases in money supply. Decreases in money supply. Huh, that happened to coincide when with it, when we had a surplus in the budget. Huge increase in money supply right after, psh, look at that, psh, you know, the uh, the 7-Eleven job application. <laughs> Uh, decrease in money supply 2012, huge increase in 2013-14, dropping and then joops, and then joops, which hasn't happened since 90 years. The Fed hasn't decreased their money supply in 90 years. Uh, this hasn't happened in 90 years. If I take my trusted calculator, my TI, uh, we've had from a long time ago, 2023 minus 90 equals, huh. 1933. That doesn't mean anything. 1933. Yeah. Anyway, so then we, uh, we come over here. Uh, the futures market expects a quarter point rate hike on Wednesday. That's today. And I just checked the markets and we're getting pummeled again today. The 10 years now uh, uh, below three and a half again. I should have bought my, I should have bought some more EDV uh, yesterday, but I forgot. EDV was down like 4% yesterday. I just forgot actually. So 10 year treasury is now below three and a half again which would not uh, uh, tell us that the, the markets are expecting rate hikes after you know, the next quarter or so. The future market expects a quarter rate hike on Wednesday, but then a series of rate cuts starting the third quarter. What the market expects rate cuts is unclear. I mean, look, you can see it. I mean, this is the freaking, I'll just show you. So there's the 10-year treasury right there. So... Three months ago, it was sitting here. About 4.2, 4 4.3. And now it's back to 3.5. Less than 3.5. That's not anticipating major rate hikes going forward, that's for sure. Why they expect rate cuts is unclear. The next inflation point uh, will be the CPI in April, which arrives May 10th. And the inflation is coming in hot. At the same time, long-term bonds are drifting down in yields. It means that people are buying them up. That's the yields go down, the price goes up. You would not expect the prices to go up when people are worried about massive inflation for the long haul. They just wouldn't. Um, and stock prices have been rising. Well, not today, but that's not a tightening of financial conditions that some monetary policies people watch. And we have yet to see the kind of weakness in the labor market. You know, I just did read today that... Uh, Unemployment numbers, not unemployment numbers, but job numbers. I was just reading that. Uh, U.S. job openings fall to nearly two-year low. Fewer people are quitting as well. So there's definitely a tightening there in terms of labor market, but not to the extent that we'd expect, you know, 25% unemployment out of the Great Depression, or even 10% during the Great Recession or even during COVID. Uh, too few policymakers... Uh, too few policymakers or investors are following what's happening in the M2 measure of money supply, like we just showed you right there. After surging about 40% in the first two years of COVID, right there, so we went from basically 3 to freaking 28% increase, M2 hit a plateau in early 2022, and then it started dropping last summer. It's down 4.1% in the last eight months, the steepest decline since the early 1930s. And this is where it gets a little bit nerve-wracking. This is Brian Westbury, Mr. Positive here. And he's, you know, he's got a book up here I'll share it with you. Um, I'll share it with you. Can find it. Brian Westbury, which I like. Big fan. Big fan long time. Uh, right here. 
it's not as bad as you think. He had written this, why capitalism trumps fear and the economy will thrive. So this is an optimistic guy. He's not a fan of Sniffy Joe, but he's not like a doomsday guy. And this was written, oops, just got hiccups, got to quit drinking. This was written in uh, 2010. Hey, look at that. Four by Amity Sh Schlaes. I like Amity Schlaes. The Forgotten Man. She had written a book, which I have, called The Forgotten Man, which is great. If this decline is real, and there is reason for some skepticism, given that the Fed releases these data less frequently than they did before, and if it continues through 2023, then by 2024, the economy could be in not only for recession, but also sudden and sharp decline in inflation. Why the press never asked about a decline in M2 that we haven't seen since the Great Depression is a mystery. I 100%. Also a mystery is whether anyone in the press corps, even one journalist, has a bravery to ask Powell in, the, in public how the Fed is financing his day-to-day -day expenses. Now that it's paying banks more to hold reserves than it earns in his portfolio of treasuries. Where does the money come from? We're not getting, they're getting three and a half on long-term treasuries and you're paying banks 4.75 to hold them. Where does that money come from? The Fed has negative cash flow and has lost more in its actual capital. Is the Fed letting some of these bonds mature and using that cash for expenses? Is it printing money? Uh, we don't know. So far this year, we think most investors have convinced themselves of overly pleasant narratives about the economy and the path for monetary policy. One of them is the Fed will cut rates this year. We don't think this happens. It may be a rethinking of those pleasant narratives start soon. I agree. I'm not sure the Fed is going to cut rates. Actually, I, I you know, I'm, I'm, I actually don't expect the Fed to cut rates. I'm holding my long-term bonds because once the late the rate hikes and stuff starts leveling off, I think the long-term bonds are going to take off. I'm, I could be wrong. I don't know. You don't know. No one knows. I think it's a good play. That's not a long-term investment horizon, 30 years. I mean, you don't want to hold long-term bonds for 30 years, but certainly there's some, some up, there's some upside, pretty significant upside with little risk relative to the, the bond market. Uh, now, bond market, look, the EDV got smoked yesterday. It's down like 3.5%, I think almost 4%. So this isn't for the faint of heart to long, own long-term bonds. But once the Fed stops hiking, I think the long-term bonds will take off. And if they do cut, I don't think they're going to cut, dude. I think Jerome Powell is doing something deliberately to say, hey, man, you know, we've got to reward the savers for once. We've been rewarding the debtors forever. We got to we got to reward the savers. I actually think so. And I'm I'm keen on that for sure. As a saver who's nearing retirement, I like having higher interest. I like being able to part money in cash and earn four and a half percent with no risk. But that does not mean that's perpetual. And by the way, if a Great Depression were to happen again, what what does that mean? I, I you gotta understand the depression. Savers made out like bandits in the Great Depression. Debtors got smoked. As I said in this book right here, well, actually, I didn't say in this book, but I, I refer to Kerry Meyer's books on the, the Great Depression, how uh, farmers went under during the Great Depression. The, the farmers who went under were the ones who had debt. So remember, the Depression, still 75% of the people had, had work. 25% right? were unemployed. Uh, you, the, the FDR is paying farmers to plow their cornfields because they want to increase the price of crops. Look, I talk all this about in my book right here. You should get it, dude. I talk all about you know how much the freaking cost, the price of goods went down from basically 1913 to 1935. It's the same price. For a pound of ground chuck, it was literally the same from 1913 to 1935. And the, the problem, though, from 19, basically 17 through the 20s, the, the mid-20s, it went like that after the World War I. And then from basically the late 20s to 1935, it went down. But the 20 year time frame was the prices were the same. Now, the issue is that stuff was scarce, dude. We didn't have the roads, we didn't have electricity, you know, as we do now. We didn't have uh, roads, uh, roads like uh, refrigeration, over the road trucking, none of that really existed back then. It became, I talk about again in my book, which you should get, obviously. But this, the facts were a lot of people, were, they had, you know, they were able to put three, you know, freaking three hots in a cot for sure, but they didn't have a lot. They didn't have a lot. And the people who were saving at the bank, now if your bank went bankrupt, that's bad. Dude. I mean, those people got smoked. Hopefully things have changed a little bit where that won't be an issue now. I don't know. But I'm not expecting a Fed uh, cut in rates and a revisiting of the money, monetary supply. And so just going back to what Brian says here, and again, this is Mr. Optimistic. If the decline is real, 
And, uh, and it, it continues through 2023 and 24. The economy would not only be in for a recession, but a sudden and sharp decline in inflation. And we're talking about deflation, which is depression stuff. I'm just telling you, man. And I, you know, I just, again, for my warning signs are flashing like crazy. The bond market looks so much better than it did four years ago. I was telling people don't buy bonds. And it's different now. I'm telling you right now, dude. If you're in debt, inflation is good. I hate to say good because, you know, but inflation does eat away at your debt. If you're in debt during deflation, you're smoked. Your goose is cooked, dude. And there's no growth. There's no growing economy. Wages aren't growing. Nothing like that. I, I, you just got to revert your mindset to what would it be like if there was no inflation? Oh, it's going to be great. Not necessarily, dude. Deflation is can be a killer for debtors in particular. We're a nation of debtors. So, you know, the, the people on this channel, I'm just telling you, man, if we could take caution. No one knows. Again, as I said a million times, to have these inverted yield curves, it doesn't make any sense. It, something has got to give. And when something does give, it'll be obvious, but I'm just telling you, why not be prepared for the what could happen, which I truly believe the Fed's going to keep the rates high and they're going to stop the M2 money supply and we're going to get a significant uh, almost like a re, what's a, like a rebirth, almost like being reborn economy, where debtors are going to go bankrupt, man. Many are going to, and it's going to cause unemployment. It's going to cause scarcity for sure. And if you're not in debt, you're going to avoid all that. Now, at the end of the day, you're still going to have a hard time getting goods, but you'll be okay. You know, people who survive the Great Depression, fine, as long as they didn't get smoked in the banks. But if they didn't get smoked in the banks, you know they they weren't flying to freaking Cancun. I tell you that on spring break, but they 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 made it by they made by. That's a fact. We'll still probably be able to uh, fly to I don't know South Padre Island, I guess maybe I don't know as opposed to Cancun. I don't know, but you're, you're gonna be okay. But if you're heavy in debt and the depression happens, you're screwed. There's no other way around, it. especially if your debt your your payments on debt is contingent on labor, because the jobs do go it become scarcer. And the Great Depression was twenty five percent in unemployment. That still means 75% of the people at work, but that means also 75% of the people, uh, they had 25% of people competing for their jobs. So they couldn't freaking gripe. They, they had to show up on time. They couldn't say, ah, screw you, boss. I didn't know because it's okay. Get out of here. I'm going to hire that guy. And on top of that, now we got more in more AI. I'm not saying it's going to happen. I don't know. I just, not to at least think about this is stunning to me. People say, and I get it. People say, oh, I'll just keep my, I got, I got no qualm with that. Stay in your markets. I got no qualm. Like my man, Thomas P. He'll be like, ah, I'm in here for the long term. Good, dude. That's freaking fantastic. That's fantastic. And I wish I had a good replacement for the Wellington Fund. I mean, you know, the Fidelity Balance comes to mind. The Franklin Income Fund comes to mind. The American uh, Income Fund comes to mind. That's not any bonds in it. But uh, there are there are some funds. But I still like Wellington, but I'm not buying it. I don't have it anymore because, you know, the Wellington Corporation has gone woke. And I just can't have woke people managing my money because they're not care. they don't care about me. They care about the... You know, it's telling everybody how woke they are. And that, that's not good business enterprise for me. So I'm not, I'm not doing it. But at the end of the day, you know, a, a portfolio combination like 65, 35, that's the way to go in my opinion. But that's up to you to decide. All right, love your thoughts. We'll see you.